But more or less for entertainment, uh, let's uh, continue with a very, very simple example. Assume that k is an integral operator on L2 of 0, 1, and that we have uh, a kernel function in L2. And the question is, uh, when is that a self-adjoint operator? And we immediately find that if k is symmetric, which means that k of x and y is the same of k of y and x, the same as k of y and x, then it follows that k is self-adjoint. And uh, yeah, um, well, let's let's prove that. So k u scalar product with v is the same as the integral from 0 to 1, integral 0 to 1, k of x and y, u of y dy dx, and interchanging the order of integration. This is the same as the integral of 0 to 1, integral 0, uh, and uh, excuse me, v of x dx, v of x dx. And this is the same as the integral 0 to 1, integral 0 to 1. k of x and y is the same as, as k of y and x. Uh, v of x, dx, u of y, dy. And uh, now this is the same as the scalar product of u and, well, k applied to v, and so that's exactly what we want to show. Okay, um, so um, uh, yeah, if k is symmetric, if, if, uh, if small k is uh, symmetric, then uh, the operator is self-adjoint. Now, what would be typical examples for that? Um, for example, we could set k of x equal, uh, k of x and y, excuse me, equal to alpha of x times alpha of y. And uh, in that case, of course, that would be symmetric. And the sum of uh, products of the form alpha j of x times alpha j of y would, of course, also be symmetric. So all these produce examples for self-adjoint operators. Uh, now, um, yeah, let me um, compute the norm of uh, that operator. The norm of KU for any U in L2, two norm squared, is given as the integral from zero to one, KU of x, squared dx. Now, plugging in the definition of k uh, and uh, setting it as, uh, setting the uh, small k as alpha of x times alpha of y, we arrive at integral 0 to 1, uh, integral 0 to 1, alpha of x, alpha of y, squared u u of um, y, alpha x, alpha y, u of y squared uh, dx. And now I can, of course, take the alpha of x out. And that's the same as the integral 0 to 1, alpha of x squared. And then we're left with something like integral over alpha of y, u of y squared, by using Cauchy-Schwarz. This is less or equal to the integral from 0 to 1, alpha of y squared dy, integral 0 of 1, u of y squared dy. And now we see that this is nothing but the L2 norm of alpha to the 4 times the norm of u.
squared. Now taking the square root and defining and dividing by the norm of u, we find that the norm of k of k is more or equal to norm of alpha squared. Now, uh, in fact, we will show that it is uh, the norm of alpha squared, and uh, then it should have an eigen vector, uh, an, an, an eigenvalue, uh, um, norm of alpha square, norm of alpha or minus norm of alpha squared or minus norm of alpha squared, and uh, let us check that, and uh, we compute k alpha of x. Now this is nothing but the integral from zero to one, uh, alpha of x, alpha of y, alpha of y, dy. But this is obviously nothing but, uh, well, integral zero to one, alpha of y squared dy times alpha of x, and that means that alpha of x or alpha is an eigenvector, eigenfunction of k with respect to the eigenvector with eigenvalue integral 0 to 1 alpha of y squared, so that's norm of alpha squared. Okay, so uh, since uh, the eigenvalues are a lower bound of the norm, and the norm is more or equal to alpha times square, we already can derive norm of k is equal to norm of alpha squared, because it can't be uh, any larger, as we showed above. And it also can't be smaller to, um, because the eigenvalues are the lower bound. So uh, we have that the norm is this one. And of course, norm of alpha squared is in fact an eigen, uh, eigen, uh, eigenvalue of k, just as we predicted. So for the simple example, everything's fine.